What's up y'all? I'm Tom and this is Like a Math Class. In this video we're going to talk about sampling data. With statistics you often need to gather up information. You need to get information from different groups of people or maybe from one group of people. How do you get that information? What's the best way to do it? I'm going to talk about that right now. Let's get to it. Let's start by saying that we've got 478 students in a high school. And of these 478 students, there are 138 freshmen, there are 113 sophomores, 105 juniors, and 122 seniors. Now, we're going to be talking about a lot of different ways that we can pull information from these students. Um, the first being a census. A census is where data from every individual of a population has been taken into consideration. So an example of this might be the seniors are looking to organize their senior sweatshirt. Uh, so they want to make sure that everyone has a say in which shirt or which sweatshirt to get. So they need to make sure that all 122 people respond to a survey uh, choosing their, their, uh, their option for the senior sweatshirt. That would be a census for the senior class. Um, if you want to do a census for the whole high school, maybe you're looking to improve the food at the cafe, in the cafeteria. So we want to survey everybody in the high school. Now getting results from 478 people, that might be kind of hard to do. So the pro is uh, of a census is that everybody is accounted for. Everybody gets their voice heard. The con of that, the, the thing that draw, a drawback for the census is that it's really hard to do. It's time consuming. Um, if you're out in the business world, it can be very expensive to do. So censuses, uh, doing a census is not always the most feasible approach. So then we go to a simple random sample. A simple random sample is when every member or item, I could say, because maybe we are sampling uh, uh, cars coming off the, the assembly line, uh, every member or item of a population has an equal chance of being selected. This could be as simple as drawing a number out of a hat. It could be as simple as using a randomizer on the internet that you find, uh, where you dump all of your data in there and you have that randomly select something. Um, back in the day when I was younger, uh, they, they used to have an actual sheet that was a set of randomized numbers and there's a whole process of going how do you randomize what line you pick and what spot you start on and you go through this and then you take the numbers from that. We don't do that in IB anymore and most uh, and I don't even think you do that in AP or other math courses but older textbooks you'll see in the back of the textbook there's a list of random numbers. Um, so what we will do is we will use various methods to make sure that we have a simple random sample. We need to find a size n of your population. So when we say size n, it means how big is that sample going to be? I did a search on Google and uh, per St. Olaf College, uh, they have uh, a kind of a benchmark where they say, if the population is less than a thousand, then you should have uh, approximately 30% of your population accounted for. And if you have a population over, let's say, 10,000, then you should be looking at approximately 10% of your population you should be uh, sampling. Or the University of Connecticut, if you go to their website, they've got a whole table based on population sizes. If your population size is this, then you should have a sample size of this. So it's gonna kind of uh, vary from group to group, from textbook to textbook, from study to study on how big or how small that sample size should be. But the main thing is you wanna make sure you're getting an adequate sampling of the population. And to be honest, there is a whole formula that goes into all of that, but we'll get into that uh, possibly in a future video. So let's go back and say we want to uh, randomly select samples of people from the high school to talk about dress code. What we're going to do is we're going to take all 478 students. Maybe we take, maybe we list them out in alphabetical order. So we go from first name or last name. We go from A to Z and we've got all 478 people listed in there. And then we're going to put it into a random sample, a random generator. If we use St. Olaf College, we're going to look at 30% of that 478 times 30% is 
is going to be 143.4. So maybe we look for 144 people. So we'll take all 478 people's names. We'll drop them in. We'll maybe make a spreadsheet of this. We'll get a whole list of this. We'll take it to a random generator. We'll dump it in there and we'll pull out 144 samples. Um, of course, if the, the number repeats, you don't want to choose the same person twice. So once you take someone out, they're out of the, the running. Or you could take everyone and drop them into a hat. So there's a lot of different ways. But the key thing here is that it's got to be random. There can't be any system to it. It has to be purely randomized. The next is version of uh, sampling is called a convenience sample. A convenience sample is when sampling, sampling is based on what is easiest for the researcher. So let's go, let's go to the idea of a dress code. Maybe the school's thinking about uh, changing the dress code and they are tasked the student council with getting information about what the student's body thinks of a uh, dress code. And the head of the student council, the president, says, you know what, I'll take this on, I, I don't mind. But you know what, the, the, the head of the student council is often a senior and maybe the, uh, the, the head of the student council, they don't really care as much. So they said, you know what, I'm just gonna ask people in a couple of my classes, we'll get, in a, we'll get a sample of what people think there, and that's what we'll report back to the school. Now, that's gonna be a convenient sample because they're only collecting uh, results from seniors. They're not actually sampling from the whole school. Um, so that's gonna be a convenient sample, and convenient samples often result in some bias. Maybe the seniors don't really care about the dress code. We're graduating, we don't care, it doesn't impact us. So now there's a bias that's happening in that result. So you wanna make sure that you are uh, not just doing a convenient sample, that you're actually getting a good sampling of all the different people that this could impact. The next uh, type of sampling is called a systemic sampling. Systemic sampling is where members of the population are selected at set intervals. So that might mean, okay, so now we've got, uh, again, let's talk about the dress code. We've got all 478 students listed. We, we don't want it to be a convenient sample. We're gonna be a little bit more straightforward in it. So we wanna take our 144 people. Um, so, or we wanna, maybe, maybe we're gonna take more than 144. We're gonna say, we're gonna list out all 478 people. We're gonna list them out alphabetical. And then we're gonna take, maybe we'll take every fifth person. So uh, maybe we start at one and then we go to six and then we go to 11 and then we go to um, 16 or maybe you start at the fifth person and then you go to the 10th per person and then you go to the 15th person. But you set them off at a set interval, whatever number you choose, but you take it all the way through the entire population. And that's gonna be a systemic uh, sampling method. And then finally, we have what's called a stratified sampling. Um, and a stratified sampling the, is where the population is subdivided into like groups or similar groups with the same uh, characteristics. And then random selections are taken from each strata. Now, what is a strata? The strata is just those like groups. So again, going back to the high school, a strata might be your grade levels, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Each one of those are grouped by a like characteristic of their grade level, how long they're gonna be left in the high school. So um, maybe that, uh, those are your four stratas, and then you're gonna take a random sampling of uh, 30 people from each group or 30% of people from each group. So you do your simple random sampling within each strata. So the freshmen, they get a simple, uh, they get a random sampling. The sophomores, they get a random sampling. The juniors get one and the seniors get one. So now you've got a selection from everybody within the high school and it's, uh, it's uh, distributed equally by proportion within each strata. Now there is one last one that sometimes co comes up um, which is called a quota sample. And a quota sample is a convenient sample of stratified groups. So the quota sample might be, uh, again, going back to the, the student council. Maybe we've got, we're at a high school where the student council is a little bit better than the, the one that we talked about before. So they've got the class representatives and we say, hey, we wanna talk about the dress code, right? So 
every every uh, cl every class representative, they go to their class and they say, oh, you know what, I'm just gonna pick uh, five people from this class and I'm gonna get their sample. So again, they're doing the stratified, that's good, but maybe uh, they're in the advanced classes. So they're only getting a sampling of folks who are in the advanced classes or in HL. Uh, so they're not truly getting a true representation of everyone from the cl uh, grade level. So a quota sample is, is it's got its bias as well, kind of like the convenience sample, but it's at least using a stratified uh, sampling. So there might be, the bias might not be as strong, but it's still going to be there. I hope that was helpful. If you found it helpful, give me a like uh, and I will talk to you in the next video.